Hi, welcome back again. Uh, Anthony Orm here and my granddaughter Adela is uh, going to do a little exercise today uh, again on calligraphy. We did one previously which was a sort of sloping type, a fairly copper play script. At the moment what we're going to do is an upright calligraphy. It's a basic um, principle that we're working to, various rules, but you know the rules can be bent and broken later, but you have to learn them to break them. Uh, and today what we're going to do with Adela is to write a few things down, little bits and pieces, to get her used to using the pen, using the lettering pen, um, which isn't as easy as a normal nib, or certainly a buyer or a pencil, a little bit more awkward, so that when we get this upright flow, it's going to be this art form I spoke previously about, uh, rather than just writing itself. So here I'm going to go now, I've put a few guidelines down, uh, I'm going to write something down here, and we thought what we'd say is, this is my first venture into calligraphy. Yes. Yep, so that's what we're going to write down, if we can fit it on. So what I'm going to do is write it down roughly in pencil first of all. I'm going to do it first, then Adela's going to have a go at it afterwards. This is, and it's only very rough here, my first. Very roughly, as long as it's roughly spaced out, venture into and then the next line calligraphy okay so that's that that's written out very very roughly let's get this ink flowing on this thing so i'm going to sort it like this i'm going to put a t on t can be done like that like this First, Two. Calligraphy. Roughly like that, and um, again stay within the lines, try and stay as upright as possible. Uh, these are your guidelines here. You could start on uh, this, these two here if you want, that one and that one, so you've got quite a bit of space in between. So if you want, first of all, Adela, is to just write up from there. This is my, you know, you write it yeah. as you would, you know, and just all you're thinking about is space, um, because if you get your spacing right from the very beginning then everything else will fall in later with it. It starts to uh, become a, a pattern and a design rather than just a bunch of, uh, of letters. It's okay, let me have a look. Um, that eye's on. It's fine. Look, 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 what you need to do is give yourself, because really the T has to come up here somewhere. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's a bit bigger than this line here, so I'm giving you a little bit more awkward down here, I'm afraid, but I didn't realise that when I did it. So this, I'll do this first, is I. And you can stop and look at how I've done it. You don't have to just guess it, because otherwise you you just compound. Uh, if you make a mistake on it, you tend to compound it and not come back from it. My first. Venture. Two. 
there are many, many forms of uh, calligraphy, uh, different styles of calligraphy, you know, and uh, different styles of lettering. This is just one of them. And you can add to it as you go. You can make your own as you go along. And that's the exciting bit. And if you wanted to do a T, it doesn't matter how you do that T, you don't have to do a T like that. You can do a T uh, like, if you're more comfortable, say, doing it like that, or if you're more comfortable, say, doing uh, a T which is sort of got a curl in it. Or this is an old sort of English T if you wanted to do a T that sort of doesn't look like a T, but that's the way it, it was done. Or you can do. Like that. But if you want to do to be more specific and for your benefit at the moment, perhaps you could stick to straightforward okay. tea like that, I'll and then we could add one. to it later as you go along. Okay. Okay, don't. We can become more flamboyant as we uh, progress. I won't hang over you, but just remember. If you want to stop, look at my lettering and think, yeah, you know, I like it or I don't like it, and put your own in, you know. You might think mine's poorly done. And, uh, I think it's very good. If you want to have a go, by all means, do so. It's what it is. It's not always about individual letters either. It's about the general harmony, creating a design. So even though you might think, oh, I'm not pleased with that letter, at the very end of it all, it probably will blend in with everything else. So it matters not one jot. What matters is that the whole of it comes together at the very end of the, the text itself, creating this design feature. Good. That's right. Step back. Have a look. You know, don't try and do it in one pass if you don't feel like. You know, you can always rest, look at it because it's not about speed. It's about balance. Always balance. E's are particularly good there, Adele. I'm very pleased with Thank those. Always difficult, of course, to do upright uh, when you're following a bigger text because you know you have to maintain that possibility of it becoming slightly crooked. But you're doing okay there, and your scrolls are nice at the end of it. Your little wiggles you're putting in at the end are good. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy with those. Uprights are always slightly difficult even though we put some guidelines it's it's uh, when you've not done it before it's a bit difficult so that's good well well done see the way it harmonizes the whole thing and let me show you something about <coughs> what i noticed um you were doing there which may help you um for later on when you do some more i'm going to do this o and the o comes down like that and round instead of doing it in one go come back again to the top and come round like that so you've got that nice curl at the bottom and you've got that nice curl at the top like that, which creates a lovely little balance. So the weight isn't on the side, the weight, you're not trying to make the weight there, which tends to go off balance slightly. It's much easier to put the weight at that kind of angle. Are you with me? The same with the E, which is why you were doing well with the E. If you do that with the E, do it wider rather than shorter, and do that little curl on it like that. If you were to do an E, which is sort of tighter 
it can become a bit you know off balance it can fall mm -hmm. over slightly whereas if you can keep the balance right on it uh, try and maintain that as you go along then uh, you know you stand a lot better chance yep. and also what we'll do before we wind up we will I'll get you to just put in a smaller part here um, as if you were just writing a letter my name see because it's small, smaller now you can see it becomes very characterful doesn't it and I'd like you to do that if excuse me I just put a couple of lines on here for now we'll separate it from the rest of it and we won't get mixed up and we'll do it so that's about the size that you would write if you were writing a letter right so and I'll do this bit here. I know I put that there. Now I'm going to do this bit again here. I'm going to put my name as Adela, even though it obviously isn't. But there we go. And we're doing it more or less. It doesn't have to be upright. It can slope backwards and forwards. My name is. Top. You see with it being a smaller lettering now, I've given you the exercise where it's bigger to try and get you used to making some things stand upright when they should be upright and getting the weight in the right places. So now if you want to put underneath it here, I'll give you a bit more space in that, I'm going to cramp that in. Uh, exactly more or less what I've done, try and emulate that and we'll call that the exercise for today and wind that up then. So here we go. And your, your letters can always be written like this to your friends. There you go. Have a look at it before you go. You see the way the M um, yeah. starts up, but it, you know, you can slope backwards, you can slope forwards. It's not, this exercise isn't all about being upright, it's about the whole thing balancing and looking like a piece of artwork. There you go. I'll move that out of the way slightly. Stand back and look at it. See, it harmonises the whole thing because it's smaller. All this is spread out a bit up here. You know, it's big and bold and brash. But here, you've got a nice little small amount of text in a, a nice compact area, as if you were going to write that letter. So here's what I want you to do for next exercise. Then we'll wind this up. So it's like this. I'm going just to do shapes. Stop there. Come back again. What this will do, you'll get you very used to using the full weight of the pen nib and the finesse of the wood. And it's like a series of lines, M's or N's, all linked together. But they're fairly uniform and they give you this idea how to use it. You're resting easy in that you're not labouring on the idea of creating the weight here and the hairline there. Weight here, hairline there, weight here, hairline there, like that. Um, and that way, eventually, your lettering will become okay. much more fluid and less mechanical. But it's all about, all about working at it and practice, practice, practice. And if you want to slope that board to help you out a bit in any way, in other words, come round to it, or you know, you don't have to stand head on, you can, you can slope it any way you want, which is where you're comfortable writing.
so good. How does that feel? Amazing. Amazingly good. Cool, yeah. Cool is the word, ladies and gents. The first venture into, um, well, a, a nice little bit of colour grip, if you say so myself. So well done there, Adela. And we look forward to the next lesson and we hope to see you very soon. All the very best. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>